Okay. So hi everyone. Um, my name is Emma Volodko. I'm the marketing officer for the Ukrainian Canadian Congress, Alberta Provincial Council. So thank you all for coming to our um, intro to computers um, workshop. We're so excited to have you and so excited that you could join us. Um, so this is the English workshop um, starting right now at six. Uh, so this will run for um, 45 minutes, like just under an hour, depending on how many questions we get. And then if you're looking for the Ukrainian workshop, that one will start at seven and run um, again for the same amount of time. Uh, yeah, so just rejoin this link if you're looking for the Ukrainian workshop. Um, and right now we'll, we'll be running the English one. Uh, so just a little intro about us, the Ukrainian Canadian Congress, Alberta Provincial Council uh, officially represents um, anyone who self identifies as Ukrainian in Alberta. We're the Alberta branch. There is um, many provincial branches as well as a national branch and at the lower level um, regional branches such as Edmonton and Calgary. Uh, so we provide leadership and coordination. Um, we identify and address the needs of Ukrainians in Alberta and the Ukrainian community. Um, and we promote linkages with Ukraine as well. Um, so we've been looking for ways to help our community throughout COVID. Um, we've, uh, over the past few months, we've been doing hygiene kits for seniors, activity kits for children. Um, we did a youth art reflection this summer um, to help kids process their emotions surrounding COVID and express themselves through art. Um, and so this, our work, our skills development series, we've been trying to help those who may have lost their jobs or um, have had trouble finding a job during the pandemic. Um, so we have um, multiple parts to this series. The first part is uh, our post-secondary webinars, so to help people find out about post-secondary opportunities in Alberta and how they can use their skills and gain a few more skills and transition into something new. And then the second part are these workshops. Um, this is the first one in the workshop series to help people gain digital skills and digital literacy skills, sorry, digital literacy skills um, to help them as computers now more than ever are really essential in um, our everyday lives. So um, this is our intro to work. Uh, this is our intro to computer workshop. Our intro to word workshop will be on November 5th. Um, we have our next post-secondary work uh, webinar on November 12th. And then our Excel workshop will be on November 18th. And all of our workshops will be offered both in English and Ukrainian. The English will be at six, the Ukrainian will be at seven. So now I'd like to introduce uh, Rory Storm. He will be running the workshop this evening. So I'll turn it over to him and then we'll come back together at the end for any questions you may have. So. Thanks. Emma. So as she mentioned, I am Rory Storm and I will just be talking about the basics of computers. So this is very basic, uh, just introduction to computers. Um, I'll be talking about computers themselves, certain just mentioning models and brands what makes up a computer, types of computers, uh, common operating systems, mobile devices, the components of the laptop, and then I'll end on a mouse and just do basic scrolling and clicking functions and what it'll do. Uh, just remember, we'll be taking questions at the end. And for the purpose of this, I'll be actually screen sharing. So I'm gonna turn off my camera here in a second, but I'll just be screen sharing so you can see everything I'm doing on the computer live. Just let me stop my video. I'm going to share my screen. And it should be running now. <laughs> and that's kind of an Emma thing. So I'm sure she'll run over here and tell me if that's not working perfectly. But yeah, so this is, you're looking at my computer screen right now so everything I'll be talking about I'll be going along I'll be scrolling up and down and yeah just follow along with my voice so to begin with what is a computer a computer is an electronic device that stores retrieves and processes information computers run programs who are also called applications or apps but uh, computers usually use applications and programs but apps is usually a short-term referred to the 
programs on his cell phone. And these allow us, these programs and apps allow us to accomplish tasks like creating documents, um, that's anything with words that have been typed up. So a document like anything with a typewriter would have typed up several years ago. Uh, it also creates spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are gener generally matrices or tables that are made up of columns and rows of boxes. And these are formatted to make budgets simpler to comprehend. Uh, an example would be like a shopping receipt where you have two different columns on a receipt where one has all the words of all the items you are purchasing and the other column has the prices that you are paying for those items. And then of course at the bottom is your subtotal and total. That is an example of a spreadsheet just printed on a receipt in that form. Of course, we have browsing the internet and communicating with other users. So browsing the internet or surfing the internet refers, excuse me, refers to visiting various websites, whether for entertainment, like watching cat or dog videos or visiting social media sites. There's a whole variety of things, but uh, like sometimes you perhaps you're just looking to find a recipe for a certain dish and you could go on the internet, type that into a search function and then find that recipe. Or perhaps you wanted to translate a word from English into Ukrainian. There are translation services online. They're not 100% complete trustworthy sometimes, but you can do that. Or maybe you want to visit the Ukrainian Canadian Congress website and just find out more about what we're about. Yeah, but uh, of course there's the ability to communicate with other users. So uh, I mentioned social media, but you can also connect through electronic mail or messaging, usually referred to as an email, or direct messaging websites where applications are there so you can type to each other in real time. It's very similar to that of a phone call, except for instead of talking to each other using you know, audible language, you can just type out the letters and just read it like a book. And a person across the world, like could be back in the Ukraine, for example, and be reading what you're typing right as you're typing it. Let's work on, let's move on down to types of computers. So a desktop computer, let's see if I can get that a little bigger. This is a desktop. It uh, means it, desktop literally translates to, it means it, a computer suitable for a desk and nowadays a desktop usually refers to any computer that is separate from the monitor so this square here that is the computer itself this is the monitor this is the keyboard and this is the mouse so there's four components usually you'll see with the desktop and those are it now a laptop I'm going to shrink this a laptop has essentially all the same functions as a desktop but it's smaller and slimmer. Um, think of it as just a slimmer version of the desktop, except for you'll notice it has the keyboard. This part right here is called a touchpad, but it's also the mouse. And of course, there's a screen. This, the whole computer itself is within the entire frame of the laptop. So it's all of this just in a very slimmer version. It, uh, it kind of emulates a book in that this top half folds down, and you can open it up to about 90 degrees. So they're slimmer, they're lighter, but they also have a battery. So you can carry it around with you, whether you want to carry it to work or you want to actually camp. There are obviously pros and cons of having a laptop versus having a desktop. Apparently my internet was crazy. That was good. Uh, next we have a smartphone. I'm sure you've all heard of cell phones and smartphones in the modern day. Uh, you've probably heard of iPhones. Samsung Galaxy, LG models, or Google Pixels. Those are all models of phone. Those are all, they're all smartphones in that you can actually touch the screen with your finger and they're essentially miniature computers. They're not as powerful as a laptop or a desktop, but they can do a lot of functions that a normal computer can do. There are just several programs that are just a lot better suited for a laptop or a desktop to function on. But of course, the cell phone allows you to call someone and uh, do direct messaging, like I was mentioning just a couple minutes ago, just in a shorter format. And then our last type of computer is a tablet. Now, if you look at a tablet and you look at a smartphone, they look very similar, except for just this picture is turned sideways. And that's because they are. The tablet is just a larger version of what a smartphone is. Uh, 
they're mainly designed to be used in the house or at a workplace, but it's just a larger screen. So it's not something you would really carry around in public as much because it cannot fit in your pocket, whereas, of course, a smartphone can. But it's common for users to use them purely for entertainment, such as videos, video games, or just a larger screen to read off of. It is not uncommon these days for people to read books in a digital format online, and it's very common to read books on a tablet just because it's larger, so it allows you to read the letters in a much larger format or font. And books online are referred to as electronic books or ebooks for short. Okay, now we're going to get on to what actually makes up a computer. And there's essentially two keywords here hardware and software. Hardware refers to the. Do you know what? Just give me a really quick second. I did have a separate screen. I'm going to go a little, but whatever, <laughs> I'll stick to what I have. I did have a separate thing before. Okay, sorry about that hiccup there. Uh, hardware <laughs> refers to the physical components and parts of a computer, so not what you see on the screen. Actually, I can use this image. So. Everything that makes up this actual physical device here, that's referred to as the hardware. Um, so certain names will be like the fan, the circuit board, memory cards, the wires, electrical parts, just anything that was actually put together to build the computer itself. That is hardware. Software, of course, just the antonym, soft, are programs or applications that are used to complete tasks on the, the uh, computer. Um, of course, that can also be referred to as applications or apps, uh, usually as they're the same. Sorry, I'm missing my line. Um, programs have been coded and developed by individuals as programs to serve a specific function or task. So even what you're seeing right here, I am using a program called Docs on Google. This whole program was designed and coded. So this is referred to as a software. Uh, just like I'm talking to you using software, everything that you see on this screen right now is used via software. Um, a simpler example would be a calculator. So if you've ever used a calculator, the software in that just allows you to, so if you punch in the number 4 and you hit the plus sub button and you hit 4, it'll of course give you 8. So that was just programmed in there in that way. Uh, sorry, I just got to give a second here. I'm just going to go to a website here for this next bit. So don't worry about the website I'm going to. I'm just using it here for an example. Because the next part we're going to talk about is just username and password. Now, uh, the username, of course, is a unique name that identifies the user. You are always referred to the user when you're reading something online. And the password, of course, is the password to get in. So think of it like a lock where the lock has, you, you need to input your name for the lock, and then the password is, of course, how you get in. No different than if you use the password to get inside of a door. Um, so I'm using Instagram as an example. A username could be a phone number, a specific name you came up with yourself, or an email. Now, because this is on mine, my username I usually use for most things is rstorm, because my first name is Rory, storm is my last name. But I'm going to just show you a little thing here. So the password can be case sensitive. Uh, whenever you make a password, you'll notice that when you go to put it in, it's not going to show you the actual letter. So I'm just using this as an example. I'm not going to tell you my password. Don't worry about the dots. That's just a privacy function that uh, they've programmed into it so that when you're typing in the letters, whether someone's looking over your shoulder, or whether someone happens to just be watching your screen through other means. There's, it's not really something to worry about, but regardless, it doesn't show the letters. So you just have to be wary of what you're typing in to your password just to make sure you have it correct. So it is possible to erroneously hit a wrong key. But uh, a tip on that, because passwords, um, you have to just remember it. Because if you come back, sometimes 
you won't log into a certain website for several days, perhaps a week, perhaps a month. Try and always make a password that you'll remember. Um, and when you do that, you'd have to go to sign up on whatever website you're on. Again, I'm not recommending or not recommending Instagram. Just if you go to a website, you have to sign up and make your own username and make your own password. Make a password that you can remember for a long time, but also never share your password with anybody online. And preferably, don't even share it with your relatives or your friends, unless it's like a very, very close relative you're not worried about. But if anybody online ever asks you for your password, whether it's a company that you usually trust, don't ever give your password up, like ever. Like a general rule of thumb, never give out your password. Only type it into the box that asks for password when you're prompted, when you're going onto the website you're going to. Okay, that's enough of Instagram. Let's go down to operating systems. So the operating system is the main program that runs the computer overall. It kind of overlooks all the other programs and applications on the computer, and you can essentially think of it like the brain. While the brain doesn't actually, like if we're thinking about your own body, your brain doesn't make your legs walk or your arms swing, but your brain, of course, is like the operating system of your body in this context. So it sends the signals to tell your body what to do. That's exactly how an operating system works, in that the operating system in the computer doesn't tell, like my mouse cursor you see here, move around in circles, it doesn't tell it to do that. It just allows the programs and applications to do that by sending signals and just making sure everything runs smoothly. And um, of course, there are different operating systems out there, and they all work a little differently than each other as they work on, run on different companies' hardware. I'm sure you have heard of Microsoft. So Microsoft was started by Bill Gates and he created the Windows operating system. So that's the specific name for the operating system that Microsoft uses when they make computers. Apple, which is a, another common company which was started by Steve Jobs around the same time Microsoft was started. Uh, Apple has the operating system Macintosh that they use for their computers. They use different uh, these companies use different operating systems for different devices, but for computers in general, Microsoft uses Windows, Apple uses Macintosh, but there are others out there. Those are just the two most common ones, and that's why I mentioned them. For mobile devices, there are, of course, many different types of mobile phones, and by extension, laptop or sorry, tablets out there, not laptops. But just like computers, they have different operating systems depending on who built them. So Apple as we just mentioned, have their brand of iPhones, which uses the operating system iOS. So this right here. And iOS just means iPhone operating system. And of course, that's only used on Apple devices like the iPhone and the iPad. The iPad is just a, another version of a tablet. That's exactly what that is. Um, Android was developed by Google. Uh, Google is a separate company from both Microsoft and Apple. They developed the software Android, but it is used on many different brands of phones that they did not themselves make. So it's just important there to realize that Android is, Android is just the software. And of course, Microsoft made their own devices, but they use their operating system, Windows 10 Mobile. And they, so the Surface is a type of tablet. So again, just like the iPad, uh, it'll be look just like that. And of course, that uses that operating system. Now we're going to look at parts of the laptop. Uh, we're just going to do a quick overview of some of the physical components of it. There's essentially all the same features on a desktop, of course a desktop computer being what that is. But just remember that desktop is made up of the four components where the computer is separate from the monitor, but we're just using a laptop because it's simpler where everything's just all right here. So if we go through the uh, workings of it from the outside. It's just easier to understand. But a lot of these things are transferable over. Like You'll see all this on the desktop as well. It just won't be on the side. More likely than not, it'll be in the front view or it'll be behind. But, uh, yeah, so let's <laughs> start with the basics. This part of the laptop is a screen. So what you're watching me right now on, of course, is the screen of your computer. You Everything you're seeing right now, you're looking at the screen. 
this is the keyboard. So the keyboard has all the letters and numbers that you would ever type in if you were making a document or a spreadsheet. And then this is the trackpad. Now, this model of laptop has a trackpad, and honestly, like most modern laptops look exactly like that, where they operate exactly the same as a mouse. And we'll talk about a mouse, the mouse in about eight to 10 minutes here, and I'll go through what the mouse does. But uh, there are some older models where you'll notice between the keys, which is what we refer to the letters on a keyboard. It's just like a typewriter. You refer to them as keys. There might be a red dot that operates the exact same as a mouse. So the trackpad could be there, but there might also be a red dot. It, they both serve the same. Sorry, they both serve the same function. Moving down. Um, so next, we are just going to talk about a power button. Now, all computers, phones, tablets, and of course, laptops have a power button. Just like your TV, it's usually located somewhere obvious. And for this example, it's the top left of the keyboard. And it has the typical, this symbol right here, the semicircle and vertical line symbol. But not all laptops will have the power button there. Like, for example, the computer I'm talking to you on right now, my power button's actually over here. And if we use a desktop, of course, since it's not folded in half, that right there, more likely than not, that's the power button right there. But there are the odd computers out there where there's a switch behind. But more likely than not, it'll be in French. <laughs> uh, let's go down. So this is the side of the laptop. Uh, let's see if it shows. So like, yeah, you see these holes right here? That's what we're looking at right here. Now, this is called a Kensington lock. It allows you to attach a lock to the laptop. And it'll look a lot like a bike lock. Uh, a bike lock, not not necessarily the combination lock, it could be key or combination, but it allows you to attach a lock to the laptop and generally will have a wire cord that extends out of it and wraps around a large solid object like a desk. If you have ever been to an electronics store, most stores employ this with their devices so that you can actually pick up the laptop or device that you're looking at, but it has a lock on it so that you can't walk away with it as it's attached to the wall or the table that it was resting on. And that's it's pretty useful like a lot of companies use that in the workplace just so that they can give laptops to their employees but the employees can't physically take the laptop with them when they try to go home <laughs> uh, I'm gonna skip over here Sorry. this port here is referred to as the USB port and don't worry about the acronym the acronym doesn't matter in this uh, circumstance but the USB is very common these days because they can be used for several things very commonly, they're actually used as ports to charge smaller portable devices, smartphones, and tablets that commonly use a single-ended USB cord to charge. But simultaneously, while those devices charge, the USB port can also transfer information between an iPhone, well, I just use an iPhone as an example, but a smartphone and a laptop. So if, you, if you've probably heard of or seen a digital camera, you probably wonder how you would get the pictures from a camera onto your laptop. There are a couple certain, there are a couple different methods you can do it, but a common way is hooking up a plug from the USB into your camera. So you can just directly download information using that method. It's a very commonly used thing in all sorts of devices. And honestly, there's a talks about just using USB plugins on walls and uh, just to charge devices in general. You've probably seen this somewhere before. Let's go back to over here. You see all these parallel like little rectangles right here? This is the fan exhaust. So these are for your fan, just like laptops and computers. Of course, these run on electricity and they're using a lot of power to do things. Naturally, they're gonna create a lot of heat. And of course, the only way to get rid of that heat is to use a fan. And the fan uses these ports to blow the hot air of it. Um, a very important part of that, naturally, then, is to never block these ports. Because if you have a blanket or something there, it's going to try and trap the hot air in there. And you never really want that. Uh, just something to note, that if you do use a laptop, you'll notice that every now and then, your fan will sound really loud. You'll be just sitting there, and your fan will just get super loud. It'll just be blowing a lot of hot air out of there. And that's not nothing necessarily to worry about. However, if it does do it very consistently, like for an hour 
on end and it might shut off for five minutes, but it turns on for another hour and just very, very loud compared to how it used to be. That might indicate that there's, enough, there's a lot of dust and dirt inside. So it's just something to be cautious about. And if you ever do need to clean it, then uh, just never use water. Never use any liquids. Um, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, if you want to get it clean, then you can ask a professional to do it. And uh, Or sometimes you can get away with using compressed air. However, I wouldn't use that unless you're really sure and familiar with what you're doing. Uh, let's go to the next board. I jump down to, I'll, I'll go back a little bit for some reason. My, okay. This is of course a headphone jack. This is no different than a headphone jack would be on a cassette player before or a CD player. Like anything, it's the exact same port you've seen before, more likely than not. Where if you have a headset and it has a wire that runs from it, you just plug it in there and you can hear things through your computer. And sometimes there's a mic on your headphone jack and it uses that exact same port. I'm not going to talk about the SD card drive because it's a little complicated. I'm going to go to the USB-C. So the USB-C is the exact same as this. The main difference between a USB-C and a USB port, oh, they're actually right next to each other in this example, is that this is just a little bit more modern. So the USB came out like a decade ago or so, where this is newer. So it's just, it's typical in that it works the same way, but it's just a little newer. It works slightly better, works slightly faster, but it's also a different shape. The HDMI port, to, it says in brackets there, to connect to a TV monitor. It's the one that's shaped kind of wide at the top and kind of a little narrower at the bottom, but it still has that rectangular shape. It's for high definition media. So it's generally used to connect to monitors like TVs or media playing devices like a DVD player or a game system. Just pretty much anything that projects a video or has bought video, sorry, audio output through your TV or a monitor. It's generally linked up by an HDMI cable. Just a tip with this too, there is no real difference in which one HDMI cable to the next. There's there's some marketing ploys you might hear or just read that says like this one's 18 karat gold, it works faster or something like that. More often than not, they're all the same. So I wouldn't worry about trying to buy the more expensive HDMI cable because they are very commonly used. Like if you want to hook up your computer to a a TV screen, you're more likely you're not going to use an HDMI cable. Don't worry about trying to buy the most expensive cable. Just any of them will generally do. Just make sure you're buying one that's long enough, an HDMI cable that's long enough to reach both your port and the TV. Uh, next, we'll go to VGA. So the VGA port is a little older. It's been around since 1987. It's this one with like the 15 holes. Well, 15 holes or so, it might be a little bit more than 15. And it's pretty similar to what the HDMI uses, except for the VGA is only for visual information. So if you hook it up to a monitor, it'll only transfer what you see on the screen, but you won't be able to hear anything. You need a separate cable to transfer the audio. The other difference between a VGA and HDMI, and like why this is a little older and why this is more modern, is VGA works on analog, where HDMI works on digital. I'm not going to get into the differences between those terms, but just think is analog is older and digital is newer. But uh, VGA only transfers visual, where HDMI transfers both visual and audio. So that's why a lot more people use HDMI these days in general. The next port is the LAN port, which stands for Local Area Network. It is also referred to as the Ethernet port, both exactly the same thing. It is the port, if you notice, it looks very similar to a phone port, like the phone wires you would have plugged into your phone into the wall in your house to use a landline. The key difference is obviously the differences in sizes of the ports, where you couldn't mistake those two. And of course, this uses Ethernet cables and a phone one to your phone. Um, this is how you would connect your laptop to uh, servers at a company or other computers. Or there's there's a couple different things you can use it for. But a main usage that landlines are for LAN, L-A-N. Just don't confuse that with LAN. Um, I'll just use Ethernet. 
You can use your Ethernet port to connect directly to your Wi-Fi router, which provides you internet in the home. And a little tip for you, if you do that, it generally allows your internet to run faster. So if you're familiar with the concept of what Wi-Fi is, you get internet through signals in the air. Think of it like radio signals being sent from your Wi-Fi router, which gives you internet. But that signal will be even stronger and faster if you directly connect your Wi-Fi router to your computer or laptop using this port. And then, of course, the last port is power. It's an electrical device, just like these are all electrical devices, they all require to be plugged in. The only thing different about these devices compared to devices in the past is that they're not permanent plug-ins on laptops. So you have this port that will come with a cable and such that you plug directly into there, you plug it into the wall. There is an, uh, there is an adapter, usually it comes with a laptop. I don't even know if one comes with a desktop or not. But uh, yeah, the cool thing about a laptop is it does have a battery. So you can technically disconnect power from your laptop and it'll run for a couple hours, depending on how many programs you're running. But if you're using a desktop, it has no battery. Maybe there are desktops out there with batteries, but general rule of thumb, if it, if it comes unplugged, it'll shut off. Okay, and uh, we're almost done here. We're get to the parts of the mouse. So there is, it's a very simple device. Um, you don't see that on this picture, but on the underneath, there is usually a laser or a ball that what you're seeing me move my mouse around now, I am using my mouse to move this cursor around. This is what we call the thing that I'm pointing. And on top, there's three buttons. The left button, referred to as the action button. The scroll wheel, which is in the middle. And the right button, which is the menu button. So the action button is how I click on things. So that left button, I can do a whole bunch of different things. Where the right button, I'll show you an example, it drops a menu. Uh, it, so these two clicking will do different things on different websites, different programs, but for the most part, that'll give you an ind indication of what it does. And the scroll wheel, uh, again, it depends on what website I'm on, but for the most part, you see me going up and down the pages here. I'm using the scroll wheel. You can technically click down, and it'll let you do that. But usually we just, we just do that, where you just spin the wheel without clicking. And then the last part here, cursors. Uh, this the cursors do different things on different pages. This cursor is like the normal cursor. You see, it turns to here. This cursor, actually, this one allows me to move the image. So this uh, it's just the form of what I'm in right now. But this usually allows you to move something. This usually is an action icon or a cursor where it'll let uh, there there there's an example where I can add a comment if I click on. This allows you to go up and down. This is a cursor you don't really come across too often. It might allow you to resize something. Yeah, there, resize too. And that's, this one allows you to highlight usually letters. So like you see how it turns into there? I can highlight it. I can do different things with it, but that's not for today. And yeah, so there is a review, but I'm going to just go to this mouse size first. I'll, I'll go through this relatively quick. But this just goes through what the mouse does really quickly. So this is a link. You'll see how, watch my cursor. This is all about the cursor right now. It's a normal mouse. It turns into that hand. It's an action. So there's another link. 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 Back at the top, so it's smaller. This is something for you to try. I'm just demonstrating it really quickly. But uh, the website, I'll go back to it, is at the bottom here. So if you go right to the bottom of this page, that's exactly what I'm on right now. But uh, you can obviously come back to this video for reference. So this is asking me to click on the number nine. So if I clicked on the three, it'd take me to a different page. So this is called hyperlinks, where these take you different places. Don't click on the surrounding trees. If I click on surrounding trees, it'll take me back to uh, page three. But if I click on nine, let me go ahead. Same thing here, 10. I want to click on the 11. Well, there is spaces between the numbers, in case you're wondering why it says 1131. One, one. It's actually a one. There's a separate link. It's it's a little confusing if you're not familiar with this. Uh, so this is just talking about allowing you to do uh, which one's a hyperlink. So you'll notice the text here. It makes my cursor this. So it's not an action text. It just allows me to highlight the words. Um, 
sure. But <laughs> uh, this, so this is there. You'll notice it's not action yet. It's not action yet. That allows me to click it. So you see the hand? No hand. So that's the one I want to click on. Going over quick. So you can obviously see right away this one. This is a button. Click me. Let's go. Hey, this is cool. I'm always wary of buttons like this because it's usually spam. <laughs> um, so those were those clicks back there. Those were I should have said those were examples of hyperlinks too. This is just showing that uh, images can be hyperlinks as well. So just like the numbers I was clicking before, exact same concept, but it's not text anymore. So notice my cursor is back to just that arrow. Which one is the hyperlink? Of course, right now you can see it's a keys. Now these are called animated images, or you might have heard the term GIFs or GIFs, depending on the type of person you are. Uh, when does my mouse change? Of course, it's on that one. So this is just getting you to click all the buttons. Sometimes, um, if you ever do a survey online, you may have to do certain functions like this. I'll talk about later, like a better example. This is just getting me to click all these things. I'll show you an example here. So this is yellow. Sometimes when you go hover over something, hovering is just not clicking, just putting the mouse cursor over top of it. It changes color. You'll notice that some things will actually do that. Some of them don't. So like this one. So double clicking is just taking, just doing the action of the left button. I double click it twice. So it, I can't demonstrate it really because that's something I do with my hand. But I'm clicking once there, I click once there, it does nothing. If I double click twice quick, look at that. And it Sometimes this will happen. If you see this, I guess this is a good thing to learn. That's called a loading icon, uh, whatever. But uh, that might be there. That might be over here. But that's just it just tells you that the page is trying to load. So you'll notice I had to wait a second there after I ob you probably noticed I probably clicked there. And just my internet was being slow for a second. So it just had that icon rotating to indicate and tell me that it is actually loading the page. So I didn't have to keep clicking it. If you keep clicking it, sometimes you may slow down processes. So just be patient, just click something once. If nothing's happened after a full minute, then you know you, you could hit click again or you could refresh the page. That's, that's internet. This is clicking and dragging. So I'm clicking on it, but it doesn't do anything. It highlighted. If I click away, it'll unhighlight. But if I click and hold, so hold down the button, and I drag it. So this is changing my colors. Uh, Everyone's monitors will have similar things. Just think of it like adjusting your brightness or contrast on a TV where, yeah, the primary color. So if I do a little bit there, there, there. But you have to click and drag. If you just click it, nothing's going to happen. But a little tip uh, is this is a very, this isn't as efficient, but you can technically click on the top side if you wanted to do micro adjustments. If you don't feel like you have the dexterity to just click and drag, find the perfect thing you just click below it you can't click here and it'll do anything but you can click right on there ain't that cool that's how you adjust your volume uh let's see if i can do that yeah so this is this is an example that's not part of this that uh, i can adjust my volume by just doing that i'll put it back at 58 continue so using the scroll bar this is a scroll bar so it's the exact same concept we just did Click and drag. Uh, next. My screen's too big for this, so it actually doesn't give me a scroll bar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, use the scroll bar again. So this one's a small bar. Usually the size of the bar indicates how much space you have. So you'll notice the screen two things ago is big because I didn't have to go far. This one's small. So I'm 50% the way down the page, 75%, 100. There you go. Where is that? Oh, can they put it way over here? And of course, there can be scroll bars. Oh, my screen's too big for this. 
Is it? Or is it just being hidden? Oh, it was being hidden. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So there's a scroll bar down the bottom. So if the page is too wide, there's a scroll bar at the bottom. There's nothing special about it compared to the side. And then this is saying that, oh, I got two. So sometimes the page can be both vertically and horizontally wider than your screen. Of course, that depends on the size of your screen. This is about a pop-up alert. So that's just showing me a sample by pop-up. So this is a pop-up. It's like part of the page, but at the same time, not part of the page. Of OK is going to obviously answer that. Cancel will just nothing. So I have to click on that again. OK. Uh, this is something more for you to try on your own. It's just like follow your mouse around it. And like if you just teach you basic excuse me, motor skills with like, can you keep your mouse in the thing? I'm rushing it, obviously. If you go off, it'll flash red. Uh, these are checkboxes. I swear, I'm, I'm almost done. <laughs> uh, little white boxes are checkboxes. So this asks me to hit all of them. We'll get some more finite examples here in a second. But. Continue. So yeah, if you were ever ordering pizza online, which you can do that, uh, you would choose whatever you want. So you could choose all of them, or if you're like me and you do not like anchovies because you just don't care for fish, or at least I don't, I would just order that. These are called radio buttons. So radio buttons just means you can only choose one option. So before we could choose all of them. Uh, if you were a student or someone writing a multiple choice test online, you would use a radio button. Uh, oh, I gotta hit all of them for that to continue. But there it is. What size pizza? Of course, you'd only choose one size if you're ordering. I'll choose large just to get through this quicker. A drop down menu is a lot like the radio buttons, where it's just a, you click it once, it gives you options. It wants me to choose five, so I'll do five. The exact same thing. I want my pizza to come in by plane, of course. And then this is a scroll menu. So think of like that scroll bar we had over there. I want six. It's like that previous drop menu, but it's a bar instead. I actually want stuffed crust. Where is that option? Not amused. And then so I click in this box. For the text box thing, I type in my name. Oh, I should I I did a little trip. I hit tab, but you should click it <laughs> for the purposes of this video to switch boxes. Click continue. There's my thing. Um, so I just showed you how to click in the text box. What if I wanted to go to something? So I haven't touched the keyboard at all, but say I want to look up. Uh, this is web. This is the internet, by the way. If I click in this text box. And I want to search up Ukrainian Canadian Congress. I go down, see how my my cursor is there. It turns into a hand. I can click on it, and voila. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Emma, you can put your video on. I'm trying to find it. Where is it? There it is. Okay. Um, so now we can take any questions that anyone might have. So you can put them in the chat box below. Um, yeah. And if we don't have any questions, if you need to kind of sit with this information and think it over, um, I will be sending out uh, that document that Rory was using to present. So you'll have a copy of all those notes. Um, we also, I'll send the link to the recording, so if you need to rewatch and go over something a few times, um, you can definitely do that as well. So I'll just look here, we don't have any questions. Uh, so just a reminder, um, our Intro to Word workshop is on November 5th, that's our next one. Um, if you know anyone who might be interested or could use these skills, definitely let them know. Give them a hand in signing up. Um, yeah, so our Word workshop is next. On November 12th, we have our next post-secondary webinar. If you'd like to learn about post-secondaries in Alberta and some new skills you can gain to build on your existing skills and um, help you in your career path, definitely um, tune in for that one. And lastly, our Excel workshop on November 18th. Um, so if you want to tackle the intimidating software of Excel, 
um, tune in for that one. Uh, oh, we have a question here. Oh, you're welcome. We just had a comment <laughs> saying thank you. So, yeah. Um, so for the next uh, workshops, you can sign up on our Eventbrite page. All those links to Eventbrite are also on our Facebook page. We have a Facebook event created for all of these workshops. So um, definitely um, check that out. And I'll be sending the links to sign up for the other workshops uh, in an email to everyone who signed up as well. So thank you so much. Have a great evening.